In this video, we're going to tie everything together. All we have done in the bonus video, the service UI, everything, the script and everything. Now we put it together and we will create our Intune win file. So let's start to copy our template. So we're going to package Google Chrome, the latest of today. So I do Windows E to start Explorer. Then I go to C, then I underscore Intune. There we have underscore template. And here we have our template. So I'm going to right click. I'm choose copy, and then I'm going to go up one folder and I'm going to paste this. Paste. So here, we already know a bit what this is going to be called, right? So I do an F2 to rename. So we know it's going to be Google Chrome. Google Chrome, 64 bit, but we are not sure which version it's going to be. So we can start by downloading the version. So well, open the browser, control N for a new tab. And let's put download Google Chrome. Let's put enterprise MSI. And here we have the one we want. I'll put the link in the description. And we definitely want um, stable. We want the 64-bit, and it's version 95. Let's download this one. Actually, while this one download, we can be doing a lot of stuff. So I'm going to go back one and hopefully see the version, and the download continue. So here we got the version. So I'm going to copy this version, because we're going to need that on many places. So I do Control c And let's go to our package here. So then we can rename it. I press F2 and we can remove all these X's here and paste. So now we got the name. Perfect. It's going to be version 95. If we go in here, we have our output, which should be empty. That's where our Intune win file goes. We have our source files who are empty at the moment also. We can already modify the detection method, which isn't required to use a PowerShell script, as we have shown in uh, previous. We can do on the MSI code, but since we have this one, let's do that. Let's edit that in Notepad++. So we're going to verify that the file is this version. And we have went through this in previous videos. I go pretty quickly by this. So we save this one and close. So now we have the detection script. Requirements we will not be using, so we could delete this one. We keep it in the template, but we don't need it here. In the source, uh, we can modify the deploy-application-ps1 file. We looked at that in previous video, but let's populate this one with some data. So we can edit this one in, uh, let's edit it in PowerShell IC. So if we scroll down here, online, 64 to uh, 72, let's fill in all the data there. So app vendor, that's going to be Google. App name, it's going to be Chrome. App version, I still have in my clipboard, so I do Control-V. Architecture, it's 64 bits, so x64. It's English language. Then date, it go by day first, and it's the 25th, the month 10, and the year 2021. Author's name, I'm going to put mine here. You put yours, of course. Friends. So now we have the metadata. I will save this one already there. Then we scroll down to uh, the welcome message here on line 120. So we want to close the app Chrome. We already checked that in the previous script, but let's keep that one. So if Chrome.exe is running, I will not allow any defers this time, so the user must close it, but they have the option to wait. However, the persist prompt is going to be there, so even if they ignore this one, it's going to come back. Then we have the installation part, perform the installation here. We don't know exactly what script we have, we're going to copy, so we'll come back to this one. So. There are different ways if it's a CMD or a PowerShell script. If it's a CMD like we did for Firefox, then we're going to use something called the start process. 
I'm going to show that here in the PDF. Execute process, sorry, not start process. So I'll copy this part here from the documentation, copy, and then go back here. So we are not going to do this. This is just to showing if you have followed along and done Firefox in the CMD format and you really wanted that. And we actually did that in CMD in uh, uh, Google Chrome also, but I'm going to use the PowerShell format here. But if you were using the um, uh, CMD format, CMD installation script, what you would do is that you would keep this execute process dash path. And here you would put the name of our installation install let's say if it was Mozilla and then we had the version and everything .cmd and we can skip the parameters. You would keep it just like this. I'm going to comment this away because we're going to call a PowerShell script and with that you just do dot double quotation dir files backslash and then the name of the file. So we're going to have to fill that in once we have that. And that's all we need. So we're, we're coming back to this one to finish. So this file is not finished. Then once it has finished to install, if, it, if uh, any Chrome was started, if no Chrome is started, our script that we did in the previous video is just going to install it. But if Chrome was started, the user is going to get this message here. And we can customize this. So let's remove whatever is in between the single quote. And they, uh, thank you, your Google Chrome has been updated to latest version. Feel free to start uh, Google Chrome. Since we closed it for them, we can put that message. So nearly the deployed that application.ps is ready. We're just missing the name of the installation file. And let's go and get that now. So we can go, I will open another explorer. Let's go to uh, with the Windows E button. Let's go to our previous package that we did earlier in this session. And if we go underscore Intune, we packaged uh, Google Chrome uh, 92 in the previous video. So let's go there and steal some of the scripts. For example, let's take the source. Here, the file we are downloading is going to be called Google Chrome standalone enterprise 64 MSI. So we don't need to change any reference. So I'm going to steal these three files. I select them, control C. Then I go to our new source, which is here, files, and I'm going to paste them here. I know there's one more file we'll take from the previous one. Let's take the Google Chrome uh, PNG also, the file that we put in uh, company portal. So that one we put outside the files. We put that one here. We don't have the logo in the template since that's unique per application. So if we go under files here, we can just rename this file to the version. So I do F2. There I do F2. And the version we have, if you haven't enabled this uh, Windows uh, feature, if you put Windows V, then it have your clipboard. So I'm going to put that here, the second one here, 95. And I'm going to rename this one as well. And I'm going to paste as well, Windows V, and take the second value here. So now these are good. Of course, we added some comments. They have not been fixed. Let us uh, fix them as well. So I'm going to do right click and uh, let's edit in Notepad++. And I'm just going to change the version number here. Control V. And I'm going pretty fast because we have done this in previous videos. And the log file we want to change as well to the right version. Other than that, it stays pretty static. Perfect. So now we have the installation. A, a quick recap. We'll look if the path exists. If this doesn't exist, we create that. And this is where we put the logs. And then we start, we run the MSI with the slash E, the MSI. We do it quiet and no uh, GUI, and then we log it. And then we copy the master preference. Uh, that's uh, a lot of settings, which is not the best way of doing settings Google Chrome, but that works totally fine. I'll change the date here as well. 25th October. We keep the year. 
and we save this one. Let's do the same with the uninstallation script as well. So under files, we have the uninstallation. So I'm right click and I'm gonna edit that one as well. Let's do that in Notepad++. So the version number, again, I do Windows V and I put the version 95 and I'll change this to the 25th October. Then in the log file, there's also the version number. Let's fix that. Windows V and take this version. We are missing the GUID for the MSI. So we need a new one. So the download have finished. Let's open this one and let's extract it. Extract all. And sure, show extracted files when completed. In here, we want just one file, the MSI file. Once this one have extracted, we go under installers and the Google Chrome standalone Enterprise 64 does MSI. This is the one we want. So we'll right click and copy, close this one, go back to our source files. I thought I had that below, but let's go underscore Intune. And then we have a Google Chrome 95. Then we have our source. And then we have our files. And let's paste it down here. Perfect. For the uninstallation, we need the GUID. So I'm gonna get that from with the Edit Orca. We show in previous video how to get that. And then I'm gonna go to Property. And there we have the product code. I'm gonna copy that one. Copy. And go to our script. Did I close that? I didn't, it's up here. Let's paste it. It starts with 61, the previous version. Now it's 2a. Did I take the right version? Uh, upgrade code? No. Product code? Yeah. And you see the product version, but we spoke about that. That's not the right one. Thought they had fixed that by now. Okay. So perfect. Here we have the good uninstallation code. So we can save this one. And I see that I did a funny 25th October. Let's save that one. Perfect. So now we have the good installation and uninstallation files. Are we getting ready here now? I think so. The, I see that I copied the logo, uh, but we don't need that in. That should have been up at this level. Paste. Perfect. Logo. Source, we have our GBN installation file that will check if the Google Chrome is started. If it's started, it will call service UI and call deploy application. So we are in the session one, so the user actually can correspond to any pop-ups. If no Google Chrome is started, GBN will call directly deploy application it, and it will be in session zero, so no uh, interface user interface. Then deploy application will PS1. It's telling that under files, we should run this uh, PS1 to install. And this one will run the MSI install. It will copy in the master preference. So now we know what this file is going to be called. So let's put that in. So we start, we go to our source folder in tune. Google Chrome 95 source. So we want to run and under files, we're going to run, want to run this one. So I'm doing uh, F2, F2, control A, control C. And we paste that in, we have the whole PS. So very important step. Let's save this one now. So now finally we have this file finished. So we can close that one. So we are good. Let's create an Intune win file. This video starts to be a bit long. Let's end with that. And in the next video, we're going to upload it to uh, Intune. So I'm going to run this one. And we have done that several times in the previous videos. So we want the source. I shift right click on source, copy as path, control V, and put that in there. Set up file. We could have multiple. To get some stuff for free, I would definitely take um, uh, Google Chrome. So I'm going to do uh, 
I'm going to do shift, uh, shift right click and copy as path and paste, but we're not going to use the whole path. We can see if full path work. It works. Okay, keep that then. Output folder is going to be where the Intune Win file will um, be created. So shift right click, copy as path, and paste that in here. Then do we want to specify catalog? No, we are not using uh, Windows S. So now it's going to create. When this one is finished, it's going to close this window. We can see the percentage down here. Perfect. So in the output folder, here we have our Intune Win file. Excellent. So this was a pretty long video and we went very quickly because we have already done this several times. But great if you follow along so far. Thank you very much. See you in next video where we will upload this to Intune. Thank you very much.